Hello! In this video we are going to have a look at how the pace bike targeting pod operates under the hood. Especially how the slant range computation and its ground stabilization algorithm work. This will help you better understand the system's pitfalls and how to become more effective using the pod. Let's first talk about the slant range computation. Whenever not firing the laser, the pod uses a manually computed slant range. This value is quite important as it directly affects the quality of the ground stabilization. The currently computed slant range is always displayed on the range indicator. To explain the computation, let's draw a simple diagram. We will start with the ground, a target and our own aircraft. This is the slant range we want to obtain. Necessary values are the target altitude, our own barometric altitude, and the pod's angles. The system computes the slant range with a simple formula of the relative target altitude divided by the sine of the angle. Whenever using the laser, you get accurate ranging information. However, when the laser measured range differs by more than 20% from this manually computed slant range, the pod will reject the laser range in favor of the manual slant range. For example, with an incorrectly entered target altitude, you can see the time to go queue blinking slowly, indicating a rejected laser range. Should this happen, one can press the reject override button to force the use of the laser range. So we see that it's really important that the entered altitude is at least roughly correct to not mess up an attack. Now, at first it may sound silly why the pod rejects the more accurate laser range, but it is actually helpful to prevent issues when you're accidentally self-lasing. When self-lasing, the system momentarily measures a very short range. If this range is forced, it completely throws off the target position. Alright, next we're going to take a look at the ground stabilization, which the pave spike executes whenever you're in tracking mode, entered by a half action on the trigger. Ground stabilization will attempt to keep the target inside while and especially after maneuvering. Even without any correction by the visor, the target is still visible, but the camera precision has drifted slightly. To understand what is causing the drift and how to reduce it, one has to first understand how the stabilization is computed. For that, let's draw a simple diagram consisting of our target and our own aircraft. Currently the pod is looking at the target. Next, we traveled for a certain time and the camera is now offset. To correct the offset, the pod captures the current INS vector and applies it in reverse multiplied by the time traveled. Under perfect conditions, this fully eliminates the offset and results in a perfect target tracking. In practice, however, significant drift can occur for various reasons. If the measured slant range is not accurate, we can see that the resulting position is incorrect. To demonstrate this, we can enter an incorrect target altitude on the WRCS panel. The system now computes an incorrect target position and drifts over time. The same happens when flying aggressively so that the INS vector changes faster than the 10 millisecond interval in which the pod executes the algorithm, again resulting in an incorrect position. We can demonstrate this effect by executing heavy maneuvers while in tracking mode. After smoothing out, we can observe that the camera position has shifted significantly, because the pace bike cannot apply its stabilization algorithm in real time. Ok, now that we know how it works, it's clearer what we need to be aware of in order to increase the tracking quality, which is the target altitude on the WRCS panel and we need to be gentle on the stick and fly smoothly. Alright, that's it for today, happy flying!